This is the Sunshine Cathedral perspective. Religious freedom being used to fight court-ordered psychiatric treatment. A Mississippi man's religious objections to being forcibly treated with psychiatric medication must be considered first before he can be involuntarily medicated and made to stand trial for threatening a judge. This is the ruling given by a three-judge panel of the New Orleans-based Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The panel of the U.S. Circuit Judge Jennifer Walker Elrod, <coughs> James Ho, and Andrew Oldham stressed that religious faith can constitute a special circumstance, as described in the 2003 U.S. Supreme Court decision uh, Cell v. United States, that can lessen the government's interest in bringing to trial a defendant like Harris. Harris was arrested in 2020 after he called the chambers of the U.S. District Judge Susie Morgan in New Orleans and asked her staff how many security personnel she had so he could know how many people he had to take out to reach her. Following a behavioral health evaluation, a judge concluded Harris was not competent to stand trial and directed the U.S. Bureau of Prisons to hospitalize him for up to four months to determine if he could attain the capacity to face trial. A psychiatrist at the end of that period determined he remained incompetent and recommended involuntary treatment. Harris objected, saying forcibly medicating him would violate his constitutionally protected liberty. Uh, Miss Thing, you were incarcerated. You, they took your liberty already. That's the point. That, that's, <laughs> hello, you were in trouble. <laughs> but also, um, he seems to be either competent enough or smart enough or, or conscious enough, or whatever, or has a good enough attorney uh, to work out these details and, and, and loopholes. Uh, okay, I, I threaten a person because I'm not in my right mind, so I can't, you know, so I can't defend myself properly. So maybe if I'm treated, I can I can defend myself properly. Mm -hmm. But now, but I I'm aware enough to say, oh, I have the right to refuse treatment. So it seems like this is a this is a pretty elaborate scheme just to not face prosecution, just not to be held accountable for what he's done. Um, I, I, I <laughs> I'm not with him. I'm just not with him. Um, if you're ill and too ill to stand trial and medicine can help, um, and, and it's not going to hurt you, and you're, you're not Christian science or Jehovah's Witness or, you know, something that has particular medical objections in their, in their faith tradition, uh, roll your sleeve up, because here comes the meds. You know, mm -hmm. I, as, as far as I'm, I, I just don't see that he has a legitimate uh, argument that, 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 that forcing medicine on, forcing me to be well enough to, to help in my own defense is somehow uh, hurting my rights. I, I'm not with him. I, he, he hasn't sold me yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, sis, I, I think that we're just throwing this whole religious freedom thing around a little too much these days. Uh, you know, there's the law and then there's religious freedom, there's amendments and all this stuff. But in this particular case, dude, you called up a federal judge and threatened her, you know, so the, the and right for security mind, detail. Yeah, right for like mind, how many people specific? Yeah, right for how people have to kill so to far I can kill you? Yeah, yeah right for my mind, not yet right for my mind. The threat was made, so therefore there are consequences. It is a prison cell or, or a padded cell, right. but there, you there, are in a cell. That's what's happening. It goes with that, so um, sorry. This is like life imitating art. There have been a number of TV shows that have had this particular theme on there where a person was um, bipolar and a couple other different um, scenarios where the district attorney went to the courts to ask for permission to medicate the person. And it's a 50-50 thing. And I'm watching this TV show right now where Vinny the Chin, I don't know if you knew him, he was a mafia boss. And he was ordering hits up and down, stealing from everybody as much as possible. And when he walked on the streets of uh, Manhattan, he was wearing a ratty bathrobe <laughs> and talking to himself. <laughs> he got away with this from the mid 60s until the mid 90s. So it's not new. and. I guess if you can get away with it, what would we say? He called the office, yeah. how many folk you got there, and I'll be buying a little bit yeah. later to take them all out. <laughs> Just to get to you. Just yeah. to get to you, yes. That's, that's a credible threat. <laughs> yeah, I would say. And, uh, and, okay, I not buy. You are not well. Yeah. But we can fix that. Yes. And, well, I don't want you, I, you no, well, now you've lost an ally here because I'm like, no, you've, you've done, you know you've done bad, and you, there are options of how to deal with this. 
uh, but one of them uh, isn't uh, just ignore it and go on with your life. That's just that's no, no that's not working for any of us. Yeah, if you can plan, you can stand for trial. Mm. Next up, we are excited to tell you about our adventure with our Global Fellowship. In 2024, we'll be going to where the hills are alive as we explore Austria and Alpine Europe for Gay Oktoberfest. Space is extremely limited, so make sure you go to happeningout.travel sunshine to reserve your space now. Would you like to join the Queer God Squad on a special winter cruise in 2024? Well, now you can. You will visit Cozumel, Mexico, Grand Cayman, and Ocho Rios, and you can even add an open bar and Wi-Fi. Join us by going to happeningout.travel sunshine. 